In the segment, we will be having an exclusive interview with Ololade Ayilabul. I hope I pronounced that right. The trailblazing Nigerian model, beauty queen, voice of our artist, and project management who is making waves in the fashion industry with her ambitious attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the longest catwalk. Lade is not only showcasing her incredible talent and determination, but also shining a spotlight on Nigerian fashion on a global stage. Lady first captured att attention by winning the prestigious Miss Amina 2019 title, a feat that highlighted her poise, intelligence, and beauty. The same year, she was crowned Miss Unique 2019, which further cements her status as a formidable competitor in the pageantry circuit. When I think about it, you did. You, try, you attempted to break that record. How was it? How did you, what brought about the idea? What inspired you to make that attempt? <laughs> Well, it's actually amazing that I get to answer this question over and over okay. again. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the inspiration behind the attempt was sort of a build up, but it was propelled particularly last year when I auditioned for two fashion weeks in Lagos, Nigeria, and I got rejected after I walked and they were like, oh, you walk so well, but you are not that tall. And I'm like, I'm almost 5'9", I'm like 5'8", something. How am I not that tall? And then you just said I worked so well. So um, it just occurred to me that we have a lot of talented, professional, good models out there who are not given the opportunity to showcase their talent and pursue their career. And then I realized that we have this stereotype in the fashion and modeling industry whereby we have um, stringent requirements to become a model. And then if we talk about fashion, fashion is universal. It should be inclusive. And that is why I decided to create a stage whereby we have different kinds of models, albinos, tribal marks, vitiligo models um, to showcase their talent. Mm. Interesting. Welcome to that. That conversation is really, really interesting. Yes. It's quite inspiring. Okay, so how did you prepare for this physically and mentally? It was a whole lot. It was a whole lot. First, I had to put together a team of professionals and volunteers okay. because um, Austin of fashion or Austin of fashion events I would run for about five days was a big deal and then I had to get trainings um, I trained every day of the week I trained with um, coach Tony Osheko in the morning he trains um, athletes people that go for world Olympics okay. so I have intensive training with them in the morning for about three four hours and then later in the evening, I go to the gym. I do about two, three hours in the gym. And then on Saturdays, weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, I have my card work trainings for about three to four hours. During the event, we're able to showcase talented designers and um, upcoming designers. We had student designers. We had um, already established designers showcase their creativity. And then if you go through um, the outfits, like if you go through the live videos and then you see the outfits that we wore, they were very creative. I don't, okay, let me just mention a few brands. I wore Colony, and then for every time I stepped out in Colony, I felt like a queen. Yeah. The material was really quality. I wore Emerald. Emerald was really good. I wore um, Desired Bears. Like, we have a lot of outfits that showcase to the Nigerian beauty. I also wore Modela. You needed to see Modela's outfit. It was so cultural, the beats, everything was just depicting Nigerians' fashion and the cultural heritage. I called for models who out Abino, Vitiligo, Tribal Max because I, I looked, I looked, I looked far and wide. Um, I looked at the modeling agency. I have not seen them. I have not seen them. I mean, we have people with skin conditions. Because you have a skin condition or because you have one so-called disability that is not a disability should not be the reason why you can't pursue a particular uh, vision or a particular talent of yours. And then so um, I used albino models, I used models with vitiligo, I used models with tribal marks on my stage and I was very intentional about that because we have to just embrace everybody irrespective of whatsoever. I mean nobody wants to be born with albinism but if they are born with albinism well embrace it and get the best out of it. Um, if we have um, people I mean, people who are not models, who are different sizes, wear different outfits, then we should also be able to have models that are their size 
model their outfits and then showcase their talent. So I hope that the fashion and the modeling industry, we have, we embrace inclusivity and even pageants, we also em embrace inclusivity whereby we have different sizes in the modeling and um, in the modeling and fashion industry. For you can, if you're married, you can go for Miss World. If you have a baby, if you're a mother, you can, you can now contest. And that's amazing because, I mean, age or whatsoever, being, having, a, having a child should not be a barrier to you pursuing your career. So um, I believe that the fashion and the modeling industry would have gotten a message across that, see, um, we are evolving and we should learn to evolve with the time and then with the whole idea of just embracing everybody, irrespective of whatsoever condition it is that they might seem to be in. Um, the first Miss Nigeria to win Miss World. Okay. What's her name? Abani Darego. Abani Darego. I love her so much. I think she was 18 at that time mm -hmm. when she contested. I really, I really tried reaching out to her when I was attempting this, um, when I was preparing for this record, but I couldn't get through to her. So Abani, if you are listening to me, I love you so much. <laughs> Okay. And there's another international model that look up to um, Coco Rocha. She's so unique. She's really unique. So those two people. I love Naomi Campbell too. So she you has. You are waiting for that. You yeah. look like her. You look, you there look was, like there her. There was a walk you I look did. Like like her. A lot of people have been putting. There was. Uh, I did an iconic walk actually during my car okay. walk. So for the first few outfits I did, I did an iconic walk, and I was hoping maybe she would see it and she'd be like, "Oh my God, that's my sister. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> that's my sister." That's like, like twin. Yeah. So <laughs> those three people, I, I love them so much. Truth be told, I get a lot. I've been getting a lot of messages, and then people just saying thank you. I don't. I don't need. Um, I don't need like the old world particularly to thank me. Mm -hmm. I just need the immediate presence that were affected to really see um, what was being done. Because I've gotten a lot of messages from people that were, um, that were very close to me during the attempts that were a part of it. And someone has said, oh, my grades were this low, but then I, I looked at you, I was inspired, I'm putting in this effort. Someone was like, oh, I gave up on this, this but because of this, I'm doing that. And that's, that's a lot of fulfillment for me, that people look at this attempt, they are encouraged to strive in their different careers, to strive in their different businesses, and then to be a better person. That's all that matters, being a better person. Okay. Kathy, I was actually a dancer. Okay. Like, I was a dancer, and then the first Nigerian that I knew about back then was actually Kathy. She broke her record twice. Yes. She did, I think she did for two days first, then she did three days. Kathy has always been an ins. I love Kathy so much. Like, Kathy was the one that even made me know that there were records, that there were reasonable, <laughs> reasonable <laughs> records that could be broken. I used to watch reasonable, reasonable. I, was I was going to that. I used I was to watch reasonable, reasonable because reasonable. growing up, growing up, I used to watch Guinness World Records with my aunt and my mom. And then what I used to see was longest nails, the women that would put their nails inside lined on bags and all of that. I didn't know there were so many reasonable records until Kafaya Kafi, until when she broke her record and I was like, damn it, damn it, I was a dancer then. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for Kafi actually, mm -hmm. and for every other person that's attempted to break the record. So what has the GR, GWR said about oh. your attempt? Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure they, 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 should, they would have reached out to you. Mm -hmm. And what criteria, did you reach out to them in order to tell them about of it? Of course, definitely. And what was the criteria they gave you? What did they tell you? About? Okay, so of course the first thing, before you can even attempt again, world record the first thing you have to do is to make an application an application takes 12 weeks for approval and then um, after your approval you get the rules and regulation for that specific record and that is what helps you prepare to attempt the record so I got my guidelines and then the guidelines was <laughs> very very funny but um, we also have the other part which is um, to put together your evidence they will also send you a list of evidence that they require to approve Ooh. your record. And that is what my team and I are working on right now because <laughs> it's a lot. We have the photographic evidence, video evidence, the cover letter, the statement. So we are trying to put everything together to ensure that there are no disparity and then we would send it back through my application. So once that is ready, would send it back to Guinness World Record before they too. give, yes, their final approval. All right, you broke a record 41 years in the yeah, making. Yeah, I did. Not uh, just 41 well, years. A record that was set by two women, okay. actually. So the, the record was set by the uh, combined efforts of two ladies. But hi, Olola, they broke a record that was set by two ladies. Mm, amazing. <laughs> you know, it's like my foreskin okay. and my nail removed. They had to cut it off. 
Whoa. Yes, it's just they are just growing back. Like I think I'm I'm recovering very fast. Yeah. So it's actually just growing everything. I have the video. I was I was crying. I cried. I didn't cry. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> it was so painful. I had pores inside. They had to extract. They had to cut them open and tet um, tetanus injection, antibiotics. I've been mm. a lot of drips, medication, and all of that. You have to get it. So <laughs> yeah. That is why I said you <laughs> will get the, you the, the, the award. You will get the award Amen. from the GWR. <laughs> But after you get mm -hmm. it, what is next for Ladi? I said, I'm working on my modeling agency. Okay, so my company is actually a mother company that has sub companies on that. Mm -hmm. And then one of them is my modeling agency. I have a cosmetic brand coming up and mm -hmm. then I have a fashion house coming up. You guys should just watch out because yes. I'm going to be on all of your faces <laughs> to the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, 